Well, let's look at what happens when um, a solid dissolves. We've talked about equilibrium before, having computer issues. There we go. So think about putting table salt, sodium chloride, in some water. And then what's going to happen? Water molecules are going to be attracted to these ionic charges. They're going to come around and begin solvating these molecules, I'm sorry, these ions, and the ions will begin to dissolve. So the ions dissolve, and as that goes on, the solution becomes more concentrated with sodium and chloride ions. And as we have sodium and chloride ions out here, some of them will actually come back and recrystallize back onto the initial solid. So we have a rate of dissolution and a rate of crystallization. And initially the rate of dissolution is greater than the rate of crystallization. As this goes on though, and the concentration continues to rise in the solution, the rate of recrystallization will increase. And so eventually, if there's enough solid present, you will have an equilibrium where you have ions dissolving and ions recrystallizing. And this is similar to the process of evaporation that we talked about with the Red Rover line and things escaping into the gas phase and then splashing and crashing into the water and getting trapped again. So dissolution of the solute in the solvent is an equi equilibrium process similar to evaporation. The rate of dissolution is going to be much higher than the rate of recrystallization initially because there's nothing out there to recrystallize. As the concentration increases, the rate of crystallization increases, and we get a dynamic equilibrium where the solid sodium chloride is in equilibrium with the ions in solution. A saturated solution is one in which the dissolved solute is in dynamic equilibrium with the solid. If you add more solute, it will not dissolve. It will just sit at the bottom. Because the solution, you can think of it as being full. It just can't hold any more of, of that um, ionic solid. So we have saturated and we have unsaturated. Unsaturated means it's not full yet. It contains less than an equilibrium amount of solute. And so in an unsaturated solution, all of the solid dissolves. And if you put a little more in, that will dissolve also. And there will be no solid present. If you keep adding solute, eventually you will get to a point where the solution is saturated and no more will dissolve. And then you have equilibrium between the dissolved and the solid substance. And then you can have a supersaturated solution. So a supersaturated solution contains more than the equilibrium amount of solute. And on the surface, this seems like an impossibility. It is definitely unstable. The way you can make a supersaturated solution um, is you can heat the solution. As we'll see for most substances, uh, for most solids, heating the solution will increase the amount of solid that will dissolve. And then if you let it cool down very carefully, you can kind of sneak up on it, right? Because it's getting more and more concentrated, and it's almost like it doesn't realize that it shouldn't still be in solution. But then if you disturb it, it will all precipitate out. And so here's uh, pictures of that. Here's the supersaturated solution, and then they're just going to I'm not sure in this one if they're just touching it. Well, that's the tweezers, isn't it? They've got one little crystal of it. They're dropping it in, and that causes the rest of it to precipitate. There is a pretty cool video, and we're going to watch it. Okay, so I, I put the um, video that we just watched on the playlist for those of you watching at home, or if you want to see it again or show it to your mom or something. It's pretty cool. 
Um, solubility depends on temperature. For solids, um, the solubility usually increases with increasing temperature, meaning that more will dissolve at higher temperatures. This is a graph of solubility measured as grams of solute in 100 grams of water um, as a function of temperature. And so we see, like for potassium chlorate, as you increase the temperature, the solubility goes up. Um, sodium chloride, solubility doesn't change much between freezing and boiling. It, it stays pretty constant. And who's the weirdo in this group? Um, sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate. Yep, sodium sulfate right here. Sodium sulfate, as you increase the temperature, the solubility of it goes down. And there, why? That's a good question. I do not know the answer to that. Pardon me? Retrograde solubility. There are other substances that do this as well. But generally, solubility of a solid increases with temperature. So we can use recrystallization and this um, principle of higher solubility at higher temperature to help us purify solids. Um, and this, this will somewhat explain some of the things we did in that barium sulfate lab. Do you remember that one with the crucibles and the ashing and the tearing out of the hair and the gnashing of the teeth? That one? That fun one? So to recrystallize something, you prepare a saturated solution at an elevated temperature. So you heat it up, and it's saturated at that high temperature, and then you allow it to cool down slowly. And the solid will form crystals slowly as it cools. Sodium acetate is easy to get a supersaturated solution at room temperature. Most things, you you can't really get it to remain super saturated because it's just too unstable. So normally what happens is if you start with a saturated solution at a high temperature and let it cool, as it cools, it will slowly precipitate out. The, the solid will form crystals, and the crystalline structure tends to reject impurities because we studied now how all of the ions fit together in their particular lattice, whether it's cubic-centered or body-centered or whatever, and that maximizes the interaction between the ions. If you get an impurity in there, it messes up the crystal lattice and disrupts it, and so that's not energetically favorable. So as it forms slowly, we tend to get a pure crystal without the impurities. Um, rock candy is made by recrystallizing table sugar. Now that's not the, re they don't recrystallize it to purify it, they recrystallize it to make it into cool shapes that people will pay more money for, right, than a sack of granulated sugar. Because, you know, the kid sees the rock candy, oh, I want that, here, have a handful of granulated sugar. I'm like, eh. Um, gases behave differently in water. Um, which you might expect, um, and, and solutions of gases in water are very common. Our tap water has dissolved gases in it, dissolved air. Um, so the effect of temperature is the opposite for gases. The solubility of gases decreases in a liquid with increasing temperature. And if we think about our experiences with soda, we can remember this, because a warm soda is going to go flat faster than a cold soda. And if you want to try that at home, you could do that. Pour two glasses of soda, put one in the fridge, and put one on the counter. Or if you want to speed things up, put it on the sidewalk. All right, well, get nice and warm. And, you know, go back in an hour or two and take a sip of each of them. And keep doing that. And what you'll find is the warm one is going to go flat, lose its carbonation much faster than the cold one. And soda, that bubbliness, is carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. Um, this has an impact on aquatic life. 
oxygen levels are lower in warm lakes than they are in cold lakes. That's why you see different species of fish in regions where the lakes are cold versus where lakes are really warm. And thermal pollution from factories is a problem. Um, they're dumping their wastewater into the river, and their wastewater may be very clean, but if it's heated and it dumps in the river, it raises the temperature of the river, decreases the solubility of the oxygen, and then fish and plant life die. When we first moved to the valley, uh, we got some goldfish. Um, goldfish tend to like a cold, cold water, more like 75 degrees. Celsius, I mean Fahrenheit is what they want. Celsius, that would cook them. Anyway, Fahrenheit, <laughs> 75 Fahrenheit. And so we got this goldfish, and he's like always at the surface gasping for air. And we finally figured out the water's too warm. It's like, um, we're not gonna lower the air conditioning for the goldfish, right? So we helped him out a little with some ice cubes for a while until he got acclimated and got used to um, a little less oxygen. Because just like human beings can get used to high altitude where the oxygen is less, turns out goldfish can get used to warm water. But, you know, they're, they're really not going to want to live in uh, water that's like, you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit or something. Mm -hmm. So solubility of gases decreases with increasing um, temperature. Um, pressure has a big effect on the solubility of a gas, doesn't affect the solubility of a solid much at all. But the solubility of a gas increases with the pressure of that gas above the liquid. Not just any old pressure, it has to be the pressure of the particular gas you're looking at. So here's the soda cans. So here's our soda can, and there's always a little bit of a headspace above it. There has to be some gas in here. And what's in there is carbon dioxide under pressure. And the pressure of the carbon dioxide there uh, increases the solubility of carbon dioxide in the soda. When you open the can, you've reduced the pressure of CO2 above the liquid, and that immediately decreases the solubility of carbon dioxide in the solution, and it starts to bubble out of solution. And it will just continue to do that. Um, so looking at these guys down here, here we have an equilibrium between carbon dioxide and the water. If we increase the pressure, what that does is it increases the rate of the, wa of the carbon dioxide going into the water, and it doesn't affect the rate of the carbon dioxide coming out of the water. And so that will continue until a new equilibrium is established with less gas here and these rates being equal. So a lot of these things are equilibrium processes and you have something going on in one direction and you have something going on in another direction and they, they each have a rate involved. And you get to a dynamic equilibrium when the rates are equal. It happens with evaporation. It happens with dissolution, all kinds of things. Well, we, we actually quantify the effect of pressure on the solubility of gases in water. Um, and this is called Henry's Law. So the solubility of a gas is dependent on the pr partial pressure of that gas. So here S gas is the solubility of the gas, usually expressed in moles per liter. KH is Henry's Law constant. It's going to depend on the gas, the solvent, and the temperature. This will be given for you. Uh, you don't even need to go look it up because it depends on lots of different things. And P gas is the partial pressure of that gas, and it's usually in atmospheres. So here are some Henry's Law constants for several gases. Um, we found out last summer that this one is wrong. That's supposed to be a negative 4. So the table in your book is wrong. Um, the unit on Henry's Law constant here is molarity per atmosphere. And here, moles per liter um, would cancel. No, I'm sorry, the atmosphere. 
This times atmospheres will give us molarity, which is what the gas solubility is in. So, of course, we can use these to do calculations. Determine the solubility of oxygen and water at 25 degrees Celsius exposed to air at 1.0 atmosphere. Assume a partial pressure for oxygen of 0.21 atmospheres. Uh, so we're looking at oxygen. We're going to need Henry's law constant for oxygen. These are for these gases in water at 25 degrees, which is matching up with our problem. So for oxygen, it's 1.3 times 10 to the minus third. So the Henry's law constant is 1.3 times 10 to the minus third molarity per atmosphere. And S um, S for the gas is equal to the Henry's law constant times the pressure the partial pressure of that gas. So we're given two pressures here, one atmosphere and 0.21 atmospheres. We need to use the 0.21 because this is the oxygen. It's the partial pressure, not the total pressure. So the solubility of the gas will equal the Henry's Law constant times the pressure. What's the pressure? Point two one atmospheres. So then the solubility of the oxygen there, 1.3 EE3 minus times 0.21, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. These units cancel out. Have you seen those gizmos that you're supposed to put on the top of your two-liter bottle and pump air into it to make it last longer? Have you seen those? Maybe they quit selling them because they don't work. If you pressurize your two-liter bottle of soda with carbon dioxide, it will increase the solubility of carbon dioxide in your soda and keep it from going flat faster. If you pump, if you pressurize it with air, the percent of carbon dioxide in air is very, very small. And so the effect that you would get from doing that is almost none. So that's maybe why they quit selling them. People quit buying them because they realize it doesn't work. So any, any questions about a problem like that?